Hello and welcome to Curiosity Cake. I'm your host Lee Delaney. Before getting into the episode, I want to let you know about a new project. I'm offering career coaching for introverts or people who think they might be an introvert to coach people towards achieving the career success they want for themselves. I'm very much an introvert and have had a very career that has covered criminology, psychotherapy and counselling, education, data analysis and management. So I'm able to share my experiences as an introvert who has gone through the process of considering career options, making career changes, progressing your career or even creating your own business. My introversion has been a really big factor in my career choices and how my career has developed and I really believe that matching your career with your personality makes for a much happier life. You're better able to make a living in a way which allows you to be fully who you are and to maximise the skills and abilities you have. So if you're an introvert and you're just not feeling fully satisfied with your career or you're starting out and not sure what options suit you or you want to speed up your career progression, I can help. You can find out more on the website introvertevolution.com where you can get in touch for a free consultation. And on a related note, if you follow Curiosity Cake on Twitter or Instagram, I'll be switching the names of those accounts to my actual name, Lee Delaney, so I can use them to post about both Curiosity Cake and Introvert Evolution. I'm also moving the Curiosity Cake website to be part of introvertevolution.com where I'll also be doing more blogging about introversion, careers, podcasting and more. Now that I've got those announcements out of the way, let's get on with this week's episode. This one is a topic that I've always found both utterly fascinating and scary at the same time. We're talking about death and dying, but more specifically, we're talking about preparing for your own funeral. My girlfriend recently trained as a celebrant, which is someone who conducts non-religious funerals. She came across the people I'm speaking to on this episode, Kate Tim and Kate Dyer. The Kates are both celebrants and created Coffin Club. Coffin Club is a movement to educate people on how to prepare your funeral in advance, as well as making people more aware that there are many, many more options available for how you can organise your funeral than most people actually know about. So this could be a sensitive issue for some people, so do please use your discretion. But this is really worth a listen. The kids are really good fun despite the nature of the topic and they were actually a bit of a handful as you'll hear. And as always hit the subscribe button, rate and review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser and Good Pods or wherever else you get your podcasts. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram via the links in the notes. But for now get yourself a cup of tea, grab a fork and dig into a slice of curiosity cake. So hi Kate and Kate, I think this is the first time I've actually interviewed two people at once, uh, so we'll see how that goes, but thanks very much for agreeing to be on Curiosity Cake, welcome. Oh hello, thank you, how exciting. I know it is, isn't it? Yeah, well we, we, we come as a double act, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's all good fun. <laughs> yes. And good practice for you, Lee, isn't it? It is very yeah, good. A, a it learning. is very good practice. You're upskilling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's like get right into the basics of what is Coffin Club. So, Coffin Club is um, an educational platform that um, wants to teach everyone who is going to die. Um, That's it, Kate. Pardon? That's everybody. Uh, yes, I know. See what I did there? Um, all the choices available to them for their end of life celebration. So we're not saying there's a right or wrong way of doing an end of life celebration or funeral. We're just saying there are lots and lots of different ways. And that if you know all those different ways and you then want to have a 30 minute um, conventional crematorium ceremony that's absolutely fabulous you've made an informed choice but if you're just doing that because you don't know that you can do it any other way um we think that's a little bit sad so we want everyone to know everything that's available to them so that they can then make an informed choice and have a ceremony that is meaningful and unique to them 
And also, um, at, at a point of bereavement, you're not in um, the mind space to think creatively. So all you actually really want to do is perhaps you hand your money over it and get somebody to deal with it for you. We also attempt to get people ahead of time so that they can ask difficult questions, they can think creatively, they can plan. Um, so we do that not only with the general public but we also um train celebrants so we have a celebrant plus course where um we're enabling celebrants to have all this information in their toolbox so that they can also help to guide and support and signpost um families we also uh offer training to people if they want to set up a coffin club in their area because um, you know, it's a community sort of driven um, idea and we want it to stay community based. Um, obviously, for the last year, that's been a bit trickier because of uh, everything going online. Um, so, yeah, we also work with hospices and doulas. Um, it's, it's just, yeah, it's just that. It's just about people knowing all the choices available to them for their final fling. So the core of it is really that educational element, making sure people are aware of all these different choices. Exactly that. Um, funerals are incredibly unregulated in this country, mm -hmm. um, which is actually very freeing because it means as long as you, in the final instance, dispose of the body correctly, which is, um, you know, cremation, burial or burial at sea. And even with burial, you know, it can be on your own land. It can be on someone else's land uh, if you're in agreement with them. Um, you know, beyond that, you can do whatever you like to celebrate the end of a life. Wow, that, I, I didn't realise that. That's really interesting. Um, how did you actually get started with it? How did you come up with the idea? So um, Kate and I were um, met as former registrars for East Sussex County Council. We were conducting weddings um, and um, we got a little bit fed up with that and decided to be independent wedding celebrants um, and thought, oh, that season, what are we going to do in the winter? And the natural thing was to actually go and train to do funerals. Um, it took us a little bit of time to work out if that's something we could do, wanted to do, because we realised that it was, you know, the gravitas of, of, of getting a funeral correct. You know, if you get the groom's <laughs> name wrong, we can all have a little bit of a laugh and a joke. But if you get the deceased name wrong, that's not such a good. And within two, two or three funerals, we sort of turned around and looked at each other and, and we said, is this the sort of send off that you would want for yourself or for a loved one? Um, is this all there is? And we were both kind of like, absolutely no, there must be more. And Kate had um, read in the Guardian, I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong, Kate. You're right, dear. Thank you. About Coffin Club New Zealand. Um, told me a, a little bit about it. Um, and we happened to just be at a venue talking to them about weddings. And um, before we knew it, we'd uh, spoken to them and we talked to them about Coffin Club. They said they had a crypt and that they would be happy to hold um, a Coffin Club in their venue. And we left with creating Coffin Club, basically. And at first... We thought because there is a an element of coffin decorating, um, we thought that would sort of be the main thrust of it. But it soon became clear that actually that was almost secondary. And the main bit was about informing people because it's almost staggering how little people know. You know, even week one, they're sort of mind blown about all the things that they don't know and that all, there are just myriad different ways of doing things because there are no rules or boundaries. You can do whatever you like. You mentioned there about decorating coffins as, as initially being a central part of what you were doing. Can you tell us more about that? 
Yeah, okay. it was really Dave. interesting. We When we first started, we actually thought that we were going to have some real work of art um, <laughs> produced. <laughs> and Kate and I haven't got, you know, we can hardly even use a crayon. We can't hold a crayon, yeah, can we? we? We're, no, we're, we're not very artistic. Um, and we, But we kind of expected some arty people to come and do some beautiful coffins. But actually, that wasn't the case. Most of them were quite childlike, um, a little, little bit rubbish. Am I allowed to say that, Kate? I think I no, can. No, I think what we're going to say is most of them were sort of naive. <laughs> is that <laughs> the right way? Yeah. But yes. do you know what? What makes but but they're just so lovely because it makes a scary box into something very, very lovely and not scary and re- represents that person. And... Um, That's what I was going to say. It's almost not about how brilliantly artistic, you know, the artistic merit. It's a labour of love. It's about what's behind it, the thought that's gone into it. Mm -hmm. So one lady, um, she's a a lone parent um, and her daughter has severe learning um, disabilities and, you know, she's made her coffin a hot pink coffin with unicorns and hummingbirds <laughs> and pictures of Elvis because she loves Elvis. And so that it's just really happy and non-threatening for her daughter. Um, so it doesn't matter that it's not a great work of art. It's incredibly meaningful. And that <laughs> makes it beautiful. I was just about to say, I mean, and we didn't know who was going to come through the doors and there and there are so many different people for different reasons that that come to coffin club i mean one lady that wanted to um decorate a coffin actually it wasn't for her it was um a way to process her grief um from her husband who had died about 18 years previously and she kept him in an urn was it under the bed? I think it was. Um, and what she did... I thought is it that, was in a wardrobe, but does it, I don't, no, I don't think it matters. It. I don't think she'll mind. Um, <laughs> no. But yeah, what, 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 through Coffin Club, she she was able to open up the urn and she, she put a load of PVA, PVA glue on the bottom of it, threw uh, her husband's ashes all on the bottom and her dog's ashes as well. She mixed it all up with... Um, bits and pieces that she's collected from the beach um, on her dog walks and things. And then she took it home and set light to it in her garden. And from um, doing that, she was able to process her grief and and let go. I mean, we were blown away by it. We just thought it was Uh. a a little club that um, we were just trying to get to people to talk and think and plan about it. And I think from that point, we realised that this was something much bigger Mm. And it was really important, and so that's how it's grown. Yeah, Would you and, say and, that's and about and about normalising these conversations. You mm. know, we literally um, we got. I'm going to give him a different name. What should I call him? Harry. We got Harry out of the cupboard every week to sprinkle into the bottom of her coffin, and it was completely normal. We'd go, oh, "Who's going to get Harry? Come on, Harry, out you come." Um, And this is what Coffin Club is like. We're talking about this subject that is incredibly taboo, that people really struggle to bring up within their families. And then they come to Coffin Club and um, we find what happens is it opens up the conversation. So um, grandchildren will say, oh, Nana, what did you do this week? And she'll say, oh, I went to Coffin Club. Oh, you went where? And then they have the whole conversation. She ends up telling them everything she wants for their funeral, her funeral, and they have a real laugh about it. And we've had that said to us more than once, haven't we, Kate? Mm, Yeah. I mean, it's. I think people are not quite sure what to expect, but honestly... It, we go from laughing, then there's a few tears, and then you're laughing again. And 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 we we do the a sort of a talk first of all from an industry expert or us or whoever. And then if you want to, you can then decorate your coffin. And the really interesting part about that is 
they're as they're processing what they've learned that starts discussion and whilst they're painting their coffin and there's no sort of eye contact they're concentrating on something else that's when the magic happens and real beautiful conversations are started there's a really lovely video on your website where there's a daughter and father and they're jointly painting yes. the father's coffin and yes. and the daughter says something on the lines of you know, like you're talking about that it really helps her come to terms with the fact that her father's going to die and it's yeah. an experience that they can have together and then that's a memory yeah. that she'll have with them as well that that is just really yes. loving and joyful. She says, um, she says there's not many girls can say they helped decorate their dad's coffin. I'm quite proud of that. That's what she says. Yeah, um, it's brilliant and, and, it, it, and it's really yeah, touching. Yeah, and it would be. Yeah, it's lovely because her mum died quite a number of years ago, so it's, her dad lives with her. Um, so, you know, they have a real close um, relationship, a real connection and yeah it is like a final act of love it's it's um quite incredible lee yeah and, and it makes you question what is respect it makes you question that is respect throwing a, a load of money or is there respect you know like we've said previously a labor of love and uh, and making uh, something awful something rather beautiful <laughs> well it's very much yeah it's very much about that process of what happens between the people involved rather than the art that comes out of it completely. oh completely i mean we and have had we've had a couple of very artistic people who've done coffins that are wonderful but um the meaningfulness of them is not greater than the ones that are from the naive school of art because actually <laughs> it's the you know it's the thought behind it all that is what really makes it you know what it is it's just mm -hmm. Kate's going to have Kevin Bacon on the inside of the lid of her coffin <laughs> so that he's she wants him on top of her for eternity. That, that's the he's... real Kevin Bacon? You're not talking about just a yeah. photograph here? No. Uh, <laughs> no. No, I just had the photograph. I wouldn't yeah. want to be, yeah. I wouldn't want Basic, to Kevin's him. not going to want to be with you for eternity, is he? <laughs> well, you don't know. He hasn't met me yet, to be honest. It could... <laughs> we could be soulmates. You just don't know. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll, I'll call his agent after this and put a little proposal together. <laughs> Maybe see if we can put out a call for the podcast as well. Yeah. <laughs> Someone yeah, get in touch good. with Kevin Bacon now. <laughs> yes, I'll have could. my people talk to his people. Yeah. <laughs> I can do the dance. What is it that dance he does? Oh, what's it called? What's the film? Oh, come on. Footloose. Dirty Dancing. Footloose. No, Footloose. Footloose. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll God, do that with him. Yeah. yeah. God love him. But it, got it, Sunday shoes. It, you know, we, we, I think just having the coffin in, say, in the situ that's decorated, it, and, and say in a barn, have it then in the front, there's the coffin as, as, as people come in. It completely changes the feel of the funeral you know if, if you're at a crematorium you 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 act differently you're all in hushed voices you're not quite sure how to behave uh. um the the uh, coffin is tucked away at the back somewhere out of reach um if you have it in a, a venue where the coffin is central to proceedings people are they're part of it because it is all about that person people uh, can go up and they can write and they can lean on and they can put things that um are meaningful to them or that person or reminds them of them just that small change completely changes the whole thing and then you can go and have a party with them in situ or you can wave them off um if they go for a cremation or a burial or whatever there were so many different ways of doing it um we're not talking yeah you know, i think some people think that we're talking about complete massive changes and being woo woo but we're not these hmm. small changes make incredible differences uh, i mean just changing the venue you know even if it's your back garden or a field or wherever um 
you know, there's a there's a process at the crematorium. And I'm not saying that crematorium funerals can't be meaningful and lovely because they absolutely can. And Kate and I have conducted hundreds of funerals at uh, crematoriums and, you know, they're wonderful. And we make sure they're as person centred as they can possibly be. But we also acknowledge that there's a process going on. It is a one in, one out Um you do have a time slot, you know, so there are restrictions on what you can do because of that venue, um, which are removed if you go somewhere else, you know. Um, yeah, so if you're using the current tour, clearly or because we've had COVID, it, something like that, yeah. you're having to follow the kind of processes that they do in their time to yeah, fit yeah. yourself into that. Whereas with what you do, yeah you can people can really just make it exactly what they want exactly that and we uh, again same with funeral directors we are not anti funeral director at all you know we think they're brilliant they do a fantastic job certainly in the last year i would not have wanted to be a funeral director absolutely hats off to them that's bloody hard work um and so you know we're not knocking that at all but we would like a situation where people are so well informed that they go to a funeral director and they say, I know what I want and I want you to facilitate it for me. So that it's not the way it kind of currently is often, which is the funeral director saying, I have these packages and you can fit into, you know, my bronze, silver or gold package. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not, quite the same it's not to say that the bronze silver and gold packages aren't you know perfectly adequate and great it's just that maybe people wouldn't have them every time if they knew they could do something else maybe they'd go actually what i want to do is xyz i want to be in this barn i want a family only committal the next day um i want the coffin in situ at the barn i want pens so that people can come up and write messages on the coffin i want the family dog there um i want to sing twinkle twinkle little star with all the children because that's what granddad sang um you know we just and these aren't mind-blowingly crazy things you know kate and i are not skipping around naked burning sage leaves um (laughs) Kevin Bacon Kevin will be only happy at the weekends. <laughs> only at the weekends. <laughs> I'll put it away, love. Nobody would want to see it. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're not talking, uh, you know, really out there stuff. It's it's still quite, you know, it's like having a sing-along, for example. You know, when you say a sing-along at a funeral, people think that you're being really glib, that that's a really glib kind of thing um because a sing-along evokes kind of happy karaoke you know nonsense Mm -hmm. um but if it's somebody i had somebody where the wife really loved abba and she always used to sing abba songs to the um husband who was the person that had died so we all sang i have a dream and it was just lovely um And, you know, people generally, we are now a pretty secular country and people are not very comfortable singing hymns often. You know, they haven't done it since school. It was a long time ago and it's totes orcs. You know, everyone's kind of slightly shuffling their way through it. I always start too high and then I realise <laughs> I've gone too high and then I go really low because I, I can't find the key in between. <laughs> All things bright and beautiful. Oh, it's our nemesis, isn't it, Kate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. Oh. Yeah. But but singing brings the congregation together. It brings, you know, yeah. you're all doing something together. Yeah. Um, I think what you were saying there as well about... Um, children like traditional funerals really aren't very inclusive of children so like you're saying there if you're doing something like singing the song that granddad used to sing with the kids like that oh, that sounds so like such an amazing way for children oh. to be included in what's going on as well yeah yeah and to well, go and draw draw on the coffin you know mm-hmm. 
go and have a little chat with granddad who's in the coffin you know it's it's all it's this normalizing that we think is a much healthier way to you know approach this I do have experience with um, my children um, when my auntie died um, I didn't give them the choice or the option to go to the funeral because I, I thought that he wouldn't want to see um, us all upset. Um, my girls were about eight at the time, and now um, they're 16, and one of them still says, why didn't you let me go? To I, I wanted to go, and, that, and I really regret that. And if any of my families, if they ask me whether or not they think it's appropriate, I would always say, absolutely, you, you, that, you know, they, they need to be involved mm-hmm. um, because that was the wrong decision. I think the thing with all of these things is um, often uh, what we can imagine is more frightening than the actual reality. So we have end of life doulas come and talk at Coffin Club about keeping your dead at home, um, which I'm not suggesting is for everyone. um, But I notice your Irish brogue, Lee, <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's more common still in Ireland, isn't it, to have a an open casket and um, have a body in the, the front room on the day of the funeral. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know whether people are actually keeping their dead at home after they've died until the funeral. But, you know, it's an option. It's not illegal. You can be supported to do it by an end-of-life doula. And what the end-of-life doulas say to us is that what people imagine is going to happen is worse than what is actually going to happen. And even if it was worst-case scenario with the body being smelly or leaky or anything like that, if it's explained to them what is going to happen, what that will be like, what they can expect to see, what they might smell. They can handle it. You know, people can handle stuff if they know what's going on and that's a better outcome. I mean, that's it's not for everyone and I'm not, you know, pushing it as a, oh, we should all do that. But it's certainly an option and for some people, you know, I always say if one of my kids died, which of course is, the worst thing I can possibly think ever happening to me. Um, would I want them in a fridge at a funeral director's or would I want them to be at home with me? Mm-hmm. And I kind of think I'd want them here with me. I mean, I can't, you know, hopefully I will never have to test that scenario, but it's worth considering. We have a lady who um, actually kept her husband's body at home for five days and she did. She got the, the um, coffin from the internet, did the whole thing herself. And she, what she um, said was that those five days, it gave her time to say goodbye. Um, mm-hmm. And so once she actually finally uh, went to put the lid on the coffin, she was ready. Um, and she and- she put the lid on the coffin. Yeah. Which I think, what an amazing yeah. thing. You know, they've been together for 50 odd years and she did the very final thing, which was to put the lid on his coffin. Is that is that something that was a lot more usual in the past? Like, obviously, you've, you, you've got um, funeral services and funeral directors and things like that now that's an industry but obviously we didn't always yeah. have an industry like that no. so is some of this kind of possibly looking a bit backwards at things that used to yeah, happen where a family would are, have had to take are, care of the body themselves and that yeah, sort of thing we are absolutely looking to the past in order to go forward, forward. you know pre the NHS mm-hmm. hardly anybody would have died in hospital people right, would have yeah. died at home and then the community would have cared for the dead and done the arranging. I mean, yeah, so the NHS, God love it, because we do, (laughs) um, is kind of responsible for that, you know, people ending up in a hospital. um, And, of course, the brilliant hospice movement. So these are all great things, but they've slightly removed death from within the family and the community. Mm -hmm. And, of course... 
the reason we're stuck in Victorian England when it comes to funerals and, you know, we have a Dickensian gent or lady walking in front of our hearses, um, I think that's down to two world wars. I think Mm -hmm. we got stuck in the Victorian era because then there was so much death with the two world wars that it was just, you know, we couldn't catch breath to rethink what we were doing. Um, But now we are. And what's very interesting is Kate and I often say to each other, you know, we've reached a point where people kind of know that that's not how they want to do it. They don't want to do it that way anymore but they almost don't know what the new way is. And we don't either. We're just, we're testing the water. We're just finding our way. So you're um, almost like coaching think, them through that process to work it out for themselves. Yeah. And funerals will evolve and they will change. And we may well be naked with burning sage before you know it. <laughs> Not ruling really anything out, Lee. We're all so different. We all have such different lives. We're, we're, we're all unique. And so we should all be able to celebrate death uniquely as well. You know, we should be able to do and think outside the box, as it were. <laughs> oh, boom, boom. Nice. Good That's one, good. I like that. Yeah. I, <laughs> thank I, like you, see, just see, that in. I may say a few words, but when I do, it's back of the net. <laughs> yeah, she packs a punch. Packs a punch, that one. <laughs> That's why I keep her on. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do tell you um, that... It, 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 the only thing I find strange, I don't know about you, Kate, but sometimes if you have a wicker coffin at the side of you, that does creak, doesn't it, sometimes? Have you ever oh, had yeah. that? At a I, I have, but I think you're a little bit more freaky unique than me, well, aren't you? Well, yeah, I'm a bit more... <laughs> She's a bit yeah. like, oh, I saw a dragonfly, it's my granny talking to me, you know, <laughs> d- yeah. Well, I do. The more I do this job, I'm much more into that side of it. I'm more spiritual, aren't I? Whereas you just look at me and shake your head and go, yeah, whatever. Yeah, but, I'm super well, I, believe, I, believe, I was. I, believe. I was going to ask, you're talking very much about the process that people you work with go through as, as your clients. Um, yeah. But I'm curious then about how has this had an impact on how you both feel about you know, your own deaths and your own funerals? quite yeah, bored really with it all <laughs> we, we do think about it a lot don't we I mean Kate wanted to be um, initially cremated and I wanted to be buried and then we've completely swapped that over um, yeah uh, I mean I... that was interesting because I don't think I wanted to be cremated I don't think I'd ever had an active decision about I it I want to cremate you I know you do <laughs> darling um she wants me to die first because it's the only way she's going to get the last word and she's told me that that's nice isn't it lee um so yeah and i that's a case in point isn't it that i hadn't ever made a decision about being cremated i hadn't thought oh yeah i'd like to be cremated i just assumed that that is what would happen to me because we just make assumptions around death because we don't want to think about it um, and it was only then when I started doing this job and I thought, hang on a minute, I really love being in nature and um, I don't like the industrialness of cremation and it's not terribly ecological, although nor's burial, to be fair. Um, and I thought I'd actually rather be buried in the little natural burial ground at the back of Hastings um, cemetery if that's where I still am with no headstone no nothing you know just me and the trees um, and where it was interesting because and um, we did you can have you can go um, backstage as it were you can go around the back of a crematorium um, you can you can anybody can go and see how it all works and and um, we went and had a tour and saw how it all worked and what I loved about it because there's all these myths and taboos and you're not sure oh does the does the actual coffin go in do they take off the handles are you is it one person at a time and as all these things were answered um and I realized that there weren't bits of ashes of other people that would be mixed in with me and it was all very clean and all they all they te- you know that there's the the staff there are fantastic um and obviously take it all very seriously 
and I saw the process and that that's what, what changed and I saw how beautiful the colors are of somebody being cremated there's a little spy hole that you can look through oh it's just amazing and I thought that's she likes I being go. she likes being warm she doesn't like being cold that is so true. that's about as warm as you can get isn't it really being cremated yeah lovely with Kevin I'm really curious if you've had any resistance to what you do, e- either just from people generally or maybe someone involved in a funeral that you've been leading. Uh, no, but we have had resistance from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> the guest, Lee, who doesn't particularly like us. <laughs> no, that's... um. Some some funeral directors um, are not quite sure about Coffin Club. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's possibly um, because they're not quite sure what it is. Because actually, we're not anti-funeral director, and we're not saying to people at all, "Oh, don't use funeral directors," or "Funeral directors rip you off." There's none of that. We don't, those words do not come out of our mouths at Coffin Club. Yeah. Um, we just say it's a spectrum it's a spectrum from doing the entire thing yourself with no funeral director and no celebrant you don't have to have a celebrant um through to having a fully funeral director led um funeral in a package and everything in between and you might fall at the funeral director end of the spectrum Um, you know, conventional, old school kind of funeral director. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's absolutely fine. If you've looked at the whole spectrum and you think, yep, that's where I am, that's absolutely fine by us. So, yeah, so we don't actually have any animosity towards um, funeral directors. We, We, I guess we do, if I was completely honest, about the funeral itch where it's become great big corporate machines Mm -hmm. the people who work within the you know at the front line the people who work in the um actual funeral directors on your high street even if it's owned by a big corporate they're brilliant people you know they really care about the families they're supporting and they're lovely but they're working within a system and i think it's fair to acknowledge that that, you know, the co-op Dignity Funeral Partners, they're in it, they, they want to, you know, make money, don't they, at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah, yeah and it seems... Um... Controversial. <laughs> 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 oh, he, he winkled that out of us, Kate, didn't he? Oh, we <laughs> yeah, were really, quite I really well. worked hard to get that. Doing really that, was, well. that was journalism at its very best, Lee. <laughs> But there's something there's something then that's really interesting. You're talking about how we've kind of distanced ourselves from death and it's really part of a whole package of, you know, we do this with our with people in our family, but we do it with our food as well. And you know, we have a distance from nature generally where, you know, death yes. is part and parcel of nature every day, whether that's yeah, you know, the food that we eat or or just you know, the the whole kind of predator prey relationship in animals and, and our own relationship with death seems to fit along with that where we've just sanitized all of those things so we don't get our hands yeah, dirty. Yeah, yeah. Completely. Well, Ooh. and we've compartmentalized, haven't we? You know, yeah. we get from children, off they go to nursery and then school and then, you know, the elderly. Kate and I were talking about it yesterday about um, whether we would pack our mums off to care homes. I was dead keen to get mine to care home. <laughs> she was. Yeah, sauce, mum. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I think, you know, that's what we've done with life in general. And then we have also, yeah, we've done it with death. We don't wring a, a chicken's neck before we eat it, do we? We, we want it nicely <laughs> wrapped in some cellophane uh cling film you know and to not actually have had to deal with the nasty business of the fact that it was once a a living creature Mm -hmm. um and we're the same we're very squeamish and actually it's not just about the um you know the physical aspect of death it's the whole kind of um vocabulary of grief as well you know 
I have um, done a funeral for a woman um, where both her grown-up sons, they died within two weeks of each other, both in unexpected circumstances. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely horrendous, you know, just the most awful thing that could possibly have happened to her. She lived in a small village and um, people literally crossed the road in order to avoid speaking to her. God, wow. I mean, that is just unbelievable. So she's suffered this terrible, terrible loss and it's making other people so uncomfortable mm -hmm. because they don't have the means to communicate with her that they would rather cross the road. And I think that's pretty damning of the, you know, British approach to this subject that, come on, guys, we need to start talking about it because that is very unhealthy. It's very unhealthy for all concerned. It's unhealthy mm -hmm. for the poor woman. It's also unhealthy for those people who cross the road because they must go home and think, actually, that I did a bad thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I didn't know. I didn't know what to say to her. I don't have it in my toolbox. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. that's why we've got to start talking about this stuff because we've got to equip people emotionally as well to deal with these things. They're difficult. They're hard. And we don't like these hard, difficult emotions. So we just you know, avoid them and we need to And everybody that. has got a story, haven't they? Everybody has got a story to tell. And yeah. once you start talking to them, and we, we talk about it everywhere, when when the best place I uh, find is in the sauna at the gym, obviously you can't <laughs> go there at the moment, but once you start sort of talking, everybody has got a story to tell. And we absolutely, it's the key, we need to start talking about it because we are all going to die and uh. it, it shouldn't come as a huge shock. And we, we plan our weddings for two or three years in advance, you know, all different um, celebrations and things. Why are we not thinking and planning and educating ourselves about all the choices that we have? I mean, even about the money, actually, you know, um, at Coffin Club, yeah, we do tell you you can do stuff yourself and that will cost you less, but that's not for everyone. And at the end of the day, this kind of shock that we're going to have to spend money <laughs> on our funeral, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you are, because, you know, you are going to require the services of people. If you don't want to do it all yourself, you're going to require the services of other people to help you. And those people deserve to be paid so um you know even that i kind of think this sort of um there's been a lot in the press about oh mm. funeral directors ripping people off left right and center mm -hmm. okay some maybe some of the bigger organizations i couldn't make a call on that lee mm -hmm. to be honest um but you know a lot of the smaller independents you know they're working very hard to earn their money and I think they deserve to be paid for the services that they are offering you would you would pay you know any other service provider and yet we're a bit funny about the fact that people are charging around death well actually if you want them to support you you, you have to pay them and I think that's fair enough so even that I think we've got to be a little bit more honest about it that well, you did know you were going to die and that there, <laughs> there, might be costs, there might be costs involved. So Coffin Club is also about that. It's not about saying, oh, we can help you get the, you know, the cheapest or cut corners. It's about saying, again, it's a spectrum. And if you've got the budget and you want to throw everything but the kitchen sink at it financially, you know, be our guest. <laughs> um, so... I think we're coming up to, we've probably done by 45, 50 minutes. Um, but maybe we can end on, you know, one of the less political <laughs> kind of points that we've talked about. So I'm just wondering if you both have a favourite experience so far from your time doing Coffin Club. Oh, there are so oh, many, aren't there? Yeah. I think I think it was when one of the la one of other ladies that came was so fright she couldn't talk to her children. Oh, I was going to say death. the same one, and, and now you've nicked it off me. Go on, you say <laughs> it. Yeah, and 
and she was paralyzed about it she was so worried that uh what was going to happen when she died she didn't want to leave it all to to her children to to arrange but she couldn't actually um have the discussion with them because they just sort of shut her down they didn't want to think about it um and through uh attending coffin club she managed to complete her funeral wish list which we give to to um all of our attendees um and so she could write it all down so it was all written down she knew exactly what she wanted and what she said to us at the end was yeah it's all written down now so i can just put that away and get on with living my life and that's was a real moment we were, we were like wow that that's that's pretty powerful stuff and yeah very humbling Mm. I was going to say the same ones. That's quite annoying. Um, but actually, uh, not. This isn't so much coffin club. This is as a funeral celebrant, but it's mm-hmm. kind of in the the same vein. Um, I a couple got in touch with me to do a renewal of vows. Um, that, and it turned out the reason they were renewing their vows was because he was terminally ill. So I did the renewal of vows ceremony for them, which was, oh my God, it was almost more uh, heart wrenching than the Mm -hmm. funeral because it was like this happy, sad, sad, happy, oh, it's just torturous, but beautiful at the same time. Um, And then I sort of, doing the renewal of vows, I talked to him and I said, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing a hard sell here, but I just want to tell you that I'm also a funeral celebrant and that if you just want to pick my brains because there are other ways of doing your funeral. And he was 50 um, and had three teenage daughters. So it kind of resonated with me because I was 50 and had three teenage daughters. Mm -hmm. And um, so he then with me organized his own funeral with his wife and he had the most lovely funeral in a barn we had um a projector with like a slideshow and then a little video of when he'd done this particular sporting event the coffin was completely central to proceedings and it was covered in photos of his life so everybody went up and looked at it and you know um wrote on it and there were song lyrics on it and um, it was just a really great ceremony. And then, as were his and his family's wishes, he was then taken by the funeral director to be cremated without his family present, unattended. And they stayed on at the barn to have the rest of the celebration. And what he said to me, he said, oh, I'm so glad I met you because I didn't have any idea that I could do this. I just thought I was going to have you know, half an hour at the crematorium. And I just think, what a gift to give someone. You know, that's just incredible. And we had the same, um, didn't we, Kate, with Ashley? He wanted to be buried on his own land, and he came to Coffin Club not knowing if he could be. It's actually really easy. So he ended up with exactly what he wanted. He was terminally ill. His family decorated his coffin for him with maps of where he'd been because he'd travelled all over the world and tickets from gigs. And he was drummed across from the like community centre to the field behind his house by these Indian drummers. And he was the same. He said, you know, I thought I was going to have a half an hour at the crematorium because that's all I thought was available to me. And... And the number of people who retrospectively say to us, I wish I'd known you when I did my dad, mum, sister, brother funeral, um, because I would have done it completely differently. And that's kind of really nice to hear, but really sad as well, because it means they (laughs) retrospectively think they didn't get the funeral they would have had. So, yeah. But hopefully you're getting the word out there. Hopefully this episode helps get it out there because you're you're real disruptors you're really kind of challenging that, that idea yeah. 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 <laughs> you're really challenging that that hold that 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 kind of the industry has on people quo. where it's like just 
the default thing because people don't know that they can do anything else. So you're doing something yeah. that's really amazing. So thanks, thanks very much for um, for doing it and for oh. telling us about it. But please t- tell oh, us. Thank you. <laughs> we love curiosity so cake. Much. I've been looking at all the different topics you cover. Yeah, good, you love so. it, don't you? I yeah, do. Podcast. That's good for my little dog walks. I do love a podcast, Lee. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, so listen, before we finish there, do tell people how they can find out more about Coffin Club. Yes, yeah, so they can go to www.coffinclub.co.uk or you can follow us on Facebook, um, Coffin Club, or you can follow us on Instagram at Coffin Club. Is it Coffin Club UK, Kate? Oh, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I think it is at Coffin Club UK. <laughs> well, well, you were doing so well. I was. I sounded t- very professional. I could see though by your face, you were like, "Oh, oh I know." Ooh. I do the same thing. It's always the Instagram one. I forget, but don't worry. Oh. We'll, we'll check it and email me, and I'll stick it. Um, I'll stick it in the the page for this episode. So Social media. Right. Oh yeah. No, it's <laughs> challenging for people to try and find us. <laughs> brilliant kate and kate thanks very much for your time that was that was so much fun um which i think is really special for you know particularly the topic that we're talking about i think really sums up exactly what you're trying to do oh, yeah thanks, and Lee. All listeners go go away talk about it talk about it with your family think about it write it down if you take one thing from this just yeah think about it plan it talk about it so there you go you've, yeah you've been told <laughs> <laughs> you have Thank, thanks very much guys thank Bye. you I hope you've enjoyed listening to this episode remember to rate and review the show on your podcast app and spread the word and get in touch on twitter or through the website and let me know what topics you'd like to hear in the future bye for now